Hey everyone, I'm Casey with Sea Reeves Makes, and welcome to a new video series. I've been chosen to participate in the Big Build-Off, hosted by the Builders Challenge. So you're probably asking, what is the Big Build-Off? I'm one of four builders tasked with designing, building, and finishing a dining table. The best part of the whole process is, is at the end of the competition, each of us will get to donate our dining table to a charity of our choice. The charity that I chose for my donation is called Home of the Sparrow, which is a local organization that serves to help homeless women and children. I will share more about the Home of the Sparrow throughout the series. The builders in this challenge are Caleb with You Can Make This Too, Donnie with Designs by Donnie, and Amy with her tool belt. Each week the four of us will be posting our progress right here on YouTube so you can follow along and let us know what you think of the challenge. I will have a link to each of the videos in the description down below as well as a link to the Builders Challenge website where you can go and find out more about the Big Build Off. There are also some great sponsors supporting us along the way as well as a grand prize for the winner at the end of the competition. So if you're interested in following along, please click subscribe and hit the notification bell to know when we post our new videos each week. Okay, enough talking. Let's get building. As for the design, I knew right away that I wanted to work with walnut on this build. It has been a staple in my shop for a while now and I love working with it. That being said, I also chose to make a more modern style table with slender and sleek lines, but also incorporate some curves and angles. After getting a rough idea for the design, I went over to one of my favorite local hardwood dealers and picked out the wood. To me, this is one of the bittersweet parts of this type of build especially when working with rough sawn lumber. You don't always know what you're going to find under that rough top layer. Being that these boards were over 10 foot long, I chose to have the dealer surface both sides as it would have been too difficult for me to process them in my garage shop. The grain on some of these boards was so clear and elegant that I actually modified my design slightly to incorporate these features. I'm starting with the top as I know that I want a basic 48 inch round table. The stock was about 7 8 thick after milling and I plan to add a second layer of wood on the bottom to build the look of the thickness. This saves cost and weight on the final product. I start by marking out defects, planer snipe, and anything else that I do not want visible on the top. After that it's over to the miter station to get cut down to its rough length. Both edges of each board are still very rough, so then it was onto the joiner to get one edge flat and square to the top face. Making that square edge gives me a reference to my table saw fence, so that I can cut the boards to their final widths. After this was done, I could do a rough layout paying attention to the grain patterns and direction. Once I had everything in place, it was back to the miter saw to clean up some of the lengths to 51 inches so that I could easily work around the table as the process moved along. Being that these boards are wide and that this is a big top, I chose to add dominoes to help keep the top surface aligned and as flat as possible. When marking the domino locations, I need to keep in mind that this is going to be a round table and I do not want to cut through a domino when I get to that part. A quick 48 inch layout circle helps keep you inside the lines. After all the dominoes were cut, it was time to get out the clamps. I use these Bessie K body clamps on almost every project I produce in the shop. They offer these extension brackets where you can tie two of their K body clamps together to increase your clamping capacity. I put craft paper down on my bench because I knew that this was going to be a big glue up. After laying out the clamps, I set the boards in their positions and started joining them together using Type Bond 3 and the dominoes.
After getting everything together, I clamped everything down and let it sit for about 45 minutes. Then I came back with a scraper and cleaned up all the squeeze out where I could access it. With the top set aside, I could start milling up the apron pieces. I cut eight individual pieces to make an octagon that would build up the thickness of the top. To get consistency in all of these cuts, I used the Rockler Precision Miter Gauge. With nice low profile adjustment knobs and a quick change angle detent, I set the gauge to 22.5 degrees and started cutting one end of each of the boards. I then flipped them all and cut them to my overall length on the opposite side. To glue up the octagon, I spread out all of the pieces and then checked the position and joints. Before starting the glue up, I wanted to trim off all the excess material from the outside of the tabletop using my track saw. This will make it easier to go around the table and cut the round profile with the router jig later. Time to start the glue up. During the dry fit test, I marked the outside of each board on the bottom of the tabletop. This will give me a reference line to follow during the glue up. As I worked my way around, I made sure each board was lined up and that the joints were tight. I then grabbed my Bessie strap clamp and a bunch of small click clamps to hold everything in place overnight. The next morning it was time to think about cutting the top round. Rockler hooked me up with their ellipse circle cutting jig which can cut up to a 52 inch round tabletop. Before I could get to the circle though, I wanted to make sure that the top was clean and clear of any glue or debris. To be sure that my router was set properly, I set the jig base on the center of the table and then using a metal ruler marked out a radius of 24 inches. This would let me know if my router was staying on track. My shop has pretty good dust collection, but it was a beautiful day outside and I didn't feel like I could do anything to control the amount of chips that would be flying off this edge while cutting. So I moved everything outdoors to make the cut. This was a fun process and I'm sure glad that I moved it outdoors. Taking shallow passes and being patient, I went around and around until the bit wouldn't cut any deeper. I did have one issue where the jig jumped off the center pin due to an excess of chips that built up around the base. Be sure to keep this clear in the future. That is a, a lesson learned there. The result of my mishap was I had to reduce the diameter of my table slightly to match the new path created when the jig jumped off. I finished the cut with my jigsaw being sure to try and stay on the outside of my routed line. I could then come back with a large flush trim bit and then clean up the outer edge. After all the cutting and routing was done, I did a quick sanding to the top to see how everything looked and to check the glue joints. I was really happy with the results and can't wait to keep moving forward on this build. Please leave a comment down below and let me know what you think of this walnut tabletop. I'd like to thank Rockler Woodworking and Hardware for sponsoring today's video and for being a part of the big build off. They provided me with some great tools and jigs for this video. Tune in next week where I start milling and shaping the base pieces using templates, a bandsaw, and hopefully some steady hands. Thank you for following along and being a part of this journey. I cannot say how thankful I am to be part of this group and this challenge. I can't wait to see all of these tables when they are done. If you liked this video, please click subscribe down below and be sure to follow along over the next several weeks. Be safe and always remember to try new things and challenge yourself with new skills and ideas. Otherwise, you will never know what you're capable of. I'm Casey with Sea Reeves Makes and thanks for watching.